Hi, I happily welcome you all to the today's English class. And in the today's class, we are going to continue the story which we had discussed in the previous class. In the previous class, we were discussing about the story Gulliver arrives in Lilliput. And you know it well, Gulliver arrives in Lilliput is an extract from the novel Gulliver's Travels. And this story, this particular story has written 300 years ago. Even now, this is one of the greatest stories of all time because it's really fascinating and I hope you have also enjoyed the half part of the story. And in the previous part, we saw Lemuel Gulliver, his aim was to become a seaman and his first travel was set in May 1699 from Bristol to travel to the South Seas and on his way he was about to travel to the East Indies and in his passage he and his crew members were hit by a violent storm and that violent storm had moved their way to the northwest direction to Van Diemen's land. The idea was to go through East Indies but the wind, the strong violent storm has pushed them to the northwest direction and to the Van Diemen's land. And in that violent storm, nearly 12 of the crew members were dead. Some of them by bad food, some of them by hard work. It went on well. On November 5, they faced hazy weather and a strong wind. And that pushed them to the rock. And the ship got wrecked. Six of the crew members were survived, of whom one was Gulliver. Gulliver didn't know what happened to other five. He tried his best and swam across and find a land nearby. He reached the shore and he searched everywhere for the inhabitants, for the people living in that land. And he found no one. And he was so tired. He was really exhausted and he fell asleep. And at the daylight, in the next day at the daylight, he woke and tried to rise up. But he was tied to the ground. His hair, his body, everything was tied to the ground. He didn't know who tied him to the ground. He was searching everywhere. He couldn't move his face. His hair was fastened to the ground. He could see only the sky. What happened next? Who tied him? That's what we are going to discuss in this part of the lesson. Gulliver felt something crawling around his body. Something was moving on his body. He didn't know what happened to him. Something was moving towards his chin. And he, what he did, I bent my eyes downwards. He bent his eyes downwards and saw a human creature. It was a human creature, not six inches high. It was not even six inches tall with a bow and the arrow in his hands. He had a bow and an arrow in his hands and a quiver, quiver which is used to hold arrows at his back. He had an arrow case at his back. And in the meantime, he could see nearly 40 of the same kind. Everyone was so small. They were not even 6 inches tall. They were little people. And most of them, they had bow and arrow. And Gulliver found out he was tied by those tiny creatures, tiny people. But he didn't know why they have tied him to the ground. To them, to the little people, he was looking like a big monster. Gulliver was afraid. He was afraid to see those tiny people. He just roared, made a sound aloud and it frightened those people. Some of them ran from those places. Some of them fell off from his body and they got hurt from falling down. One of them, he came near to his face. He, he saw the full of his face and he lifted up his hands and eyes. He lifted up his hands and eyes by way of admiration. By way of admiration, he cried out in a shrill. He cried out loud, but a distinct voice. It was a unique voice. Hekina Degul. He shouted it loud. Hekina Degul. Gulliver didn't know what it was. And soon, everyone shouted the same. Everyone was shouting Hekina Degul at the same time. 
and Galiva he laid onto the ground even with those uneasiness. And after a while, Galiva had a chance to break the strings, break the ropes which was tied on his left hand, and as well as the rope tied onto his left head. He was about to break those things. When he was about to rise up, the little creatures from his body they ran off. This time they didn't fail. They ran off, and he, Galiver, I heard one of them cry aloud. One of them was shouting, "Talgo phone out!" One of them was shouting, "Talgo phone out!" In an instant, in an instant, I felt a hundred arrows discharged on my left hand. They released hundred arrows to his left hand. Which pricked me like so many needles. It just pricked him like so many needles were pricking. Galiver just groaned in pain, and he lay down the ground. He knew it well. It was wise to break all those ropes and flee from this place at night when everyone was asleep. That was his next plan. When the people around him observed that. Galiver was quiet. They did nothing. They did nothing. They shot no arrows at him. But he could hear a noise. The people were increasing in numbers, and I saw a stage being erected. He saw a stage. They were erecting a stage about a foot and a half. It was one point five feet from the ground. Capable of holding four inhabitants, capable of holding four little creatures with two or three ladders to mount it. To rise on it, they have to mount two or three ladders. And from that, one of them was standing on it. It was one of his leaders. He made really a very long speech, but Gulliver couldn't understand anything. And suddenly, after his speech, nearly forty to fifty people. Were on his left side of his head and cut those ropes, cut those strings that was fastened to the ground. And the leader, another time, he reassured with his body language that if he was quiet, they would do nothing. And after that, the leader he came down from the stage and commanded them to bring several ladders. They brought the people brought several ladders on both of his sides. They were climbing on it and climbing on the body of Gulliver. Each of them was carrying baskets of meat. Yes, they are going to feed him. They are going to feed Gulliver. They brought baskets of meat, which the king, the king of that place, ordered the people to feed Gulliver. So they brought baskets of meat. To ask the mouth of Gulliver, and Gulliver, I ate them by two or three at a mouthful, two or three baskets at a mouthful, and took three loaves, three loaves at a time. He took three loaves of bread at a time, and he ate two or three mouthful of baskets at a time, mouthful of baskets which is full of meat. Gulliver then made another sign that he was thirsty. He wanted to drink something. They understood it. The people around him, they understood it. They knew it well that small quantity of it would never satisfy him. So they carried a huge pot of milk. To them, it was huge. They brought a huge pot of milk and rolled it to his hand. He got that and drank it in a gulp. They brought another time. He made some signs to bring more milk, but in that village. They had no more milk. They were out of milk. Everything was drunk by Gulliver. And after this happy meal, Gulliver fell asleep. And that was the first day of Gulliver in Lilliput. If you want to know what happened next, just read the novel Gulliver's Travel, and then you get to know what happened to Gulliver next. The author of the story, Jonathan Swift, was an Anglo-Irish author. He had written many irony stories, like *A Modest Proposal*, which directly criticized the society of his time. *Gulliver's Travel* is his famous work. 
I hope you had understood it really well. That's the end of our today's class. Thank you for watching this video.